God bless you and praise the Lord. This is Pastor Benji Nobles coming to you uh, live from the Sanctuary of Greater Believers Worship Center. Uh, we pray all is well with everyone and we pray that your day has been blessed thus far. Can I tell you something? If you can hear me and you can see me, then I'm telling you God's purpose and plan for your life uh, is still being called out from eternity. And so I pray that wherever you are watching me from, that you are experiencing God's presence in your life. And wherever his presence is, you also have his what? His dunamis, his inherent power. And wherever his power is, you will find his what? Provision. So he provides uh, for you. And wherever he provides, he has to protect what he provides for. So I know you are experiencing God's protection uh, in your life. And so wherever you find God's presence, power, provision, and protection in your life, I know you will find his purpose in his plan. Pray all is well with everyone. The weather here in southwest Georgia in Moultrie, Cokie County is nice. You can tell spring is in the air. Summer is about to what? Summer, we are approaching upon summer. But we have to what? Continue to utilize wisdom. We have to continue to utilize wisdom. Uh, for as I know, as of this moment, we have not reached herd immunity. And that means majority of the population has been vaccinated to the point that now uh, COVID-19 uh, cannot spread. We are in the midst of a pandemic. If you're like me, you know, we're having, we're, we're having a double uh, pandemic fatigue uh, and we want to get about with our normal lives. Can I tell y'all something? I don't want to go back to normal. We cannot go back to normal, uh, especially when it comes down to what uh, our spiritual lives. Uh, when it comes down to reacting and going about our day-to-day -day business, y'all, we'll never be back to normal. I think this is a time where, for some of us, by now, we have it should have established some disciplines. I say it all the time. Disciples are disciplined, especially, especially uh, those of us who are born again and those of us who have named the name of Christ and have departed from iniquity and have accepted Christ into our life. Uh, disciples are disciplined. And so by now we should have established <clears throat> um, uh, some discipline in our lives. And can I tell y'all something? Uh, and I said it and I've said it time and time again. Uh, this, this time that God has allowed us to be in has revealed a lot of things, a lot of things about our spiritual walks. And not only our spiritual walks, our natural lives. By now our relationships ought to be better with families. Our relationships ought to be better with what with spouses, with children. But I'm afraid, I'm afraid that uh, some of us uh, we haven't taken advantage of this time, and we don't want this a uh, year and a half to go by, if not longer, uh, that we see where we have not grown uh, spiritually, we have not grown emotionally, we have not gone grown relationally. I think we need to reevaluate as. We try to get back to what? Uh, pro post COVID-19, we actually need to do some evaluation. Did, am I the same? Have something about my life changed? And I'm not talking about, you know, fear. I'm talking about has something about your relationships, your relationships with who? First, uh, Christ, and then your relationship with your spouse, with your children. Has it what changed? See, I'm, I'm teaching already. Has it changed? And I. And I promise you, as you look at it, you ought to make some what? Serious introspection to determine what? Whether or not some things have changed. And unfortunately, can I tell y'all something? Some of us are going to come out of this pandemic the same way we came in. Nothing changed. And that's going to be what? I think that's going to be a shame. I'm telling you, if you came, if you are still here in 2000. You came through 2020, you had 2021. Listen, you got a reason to praise him. And so we're going to give a couple of more minutes and we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. I'm excited about this, what, this, this new series that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, y'all, some principles of what? Outreach and evangelism. Uh, we're still on the topic of reintroducing Jesus. I, I'm still on that vein. I believe that we need to reintroduce Christ back to the world because now we're not hearing about it. Our focus is what? Somewhere else. Our focus is on problems. But can I tell you this? The epistle said, the apostle said, 
If only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are the most men, most miserable. What he was saying is uh, Christ's resurrection, now that he's resurrected, now that he's what, sitting on the throne and he's on his way back, we ought to have a greater hope. See, I'm teaching already. But hey, y'all, glad y'all here. I'm glad you or allowed me in your living rooms. I'm glad you allowed me in your kitchen, uh, in your bedrooms. I'm glad you allowed me to come into your house. I don't take this time for granted. I really appreciate this moment uh, to come into your houses and, and teach the word of God. Hey, listen, we have started in-person worship services uh, here at Greater Believers Worship Center. I know some of us are still comfortable uh, doing the online thing and doing the social distance. Can I tell y'all something? I think it's an indictment. I think it's a shame because we have reestablished other things in our lives and we're not fearful. But when it comes down to the house of God, we're fearful to walk into the house of God because we're afraid we're going to get something. I think that's really an indictment. I really think that shows you where your life is in terms of your focus. Because as Christians, as believers, we ought, our number one focus ought to be what? Christ and you reuniting what? With Christ and reuniting with the body. I, I know, I know we on this trip about the churches in your heart, but can I tell you something? There is a responsibility, there is a purpose for in person worship and the gathering of believers together. We saw it in Hebrews. We see it in Hebrews. Y'all know the scripture, not forsaken the assembly of yourselves, what? Even the more as our day of redemption draw up now, but we are what to encourage, to inspire. The church is the place where you are what? Trained and you are taught what the principles of the kingdom so you can leave outside of the four walls of the church and go what? And then go what? Practice the kingdom. All other institutions, and that's strange, all other institutions require that you what be educated and trained before you practice. And so when it comes down to the things of God, and I know why, when it comes down to the things of God, you know the intangible. Because the things of God are what? Intangible. You know, the spiritual things. You know, we can't see spiritual things. But can I, can I tell you something? It does manifest it itself in what? In flesh. And how does it? By our behaviors, our attitudes, what we do, what we don't do, what we say, what we don't say. All that is a result of what was going on in our hearts. What he said is not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out. It says out of the abundance of the what heart, not this natural heart, but your spiritual heart, the mouth speaks. So what are we speaking? What are we saying? I was in the meeting today with a bunch of leaders in this community, talking about what? Talking about gangs in this community. Talking about the area where my church is. The first thing I said when I got up is, we have to change our what? Tone. Around my church is not the worst part of what? Moultrie. Let's change that. Let's change our tones. Perhaps, you know, because the Bible says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What we speak manifests. And we have to be careful, especially children of God. Man, I'm teaching already. Especially teaching uh, children of God because we are sons of God. We are created what? In his likeness, in his image. We have his spirit. We have what that creative ability. What we say can manifest in the flesh, can manifest tangibly. So I got up, first thing I said, nobody was talking. You know, they were saying, talking about pastors. So I got up and said, I'm a law enforcement officer and I'm a pastor and I'm an educator. Let me say this. First thing, we need to change our tone. Let's start thinking positive. Let's start speaking stuff into the atmosphere. Y'all don't want to hear me. What are you saying? What has manifested? This is what I said all that to say this. What has manifested in your life during this COVID-19 pandemic? And I'm telling you, we are seeing some things. Hey, y'all, I'm glad y'all allowed. It's one of those days. It's one of those times. You know, I'm up here. I'm ready to see God do, what, do some things. I'm anticipating him doing some things. I'm ready now. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. I'm at the point now. There are some things I cannot go back to. There are some attitudes, beliefs, behaviors that I did pre-COVID-19 that I can't go back to. 
And then those around me either going to what? They're going to conform to it or they will not be around me. Why, y'all? Because I am astounded at God's grace and mercy. And do you not know? Y'all put your prayer request in. If you have a specific prayer request, we're going to pray. If you have a specific prayer request and you want us to intercede for you, you, you want us to go on behalf of God, you want us to come in, into covenant agreement, if it's the word, then put it down. And I promise you, after I review this, after I uh, review this, I'm going to what, be praying for you. I promise you. I'm not those one of those people that say, you know, I'm going to pray for you. I don't. That's, that's lying. So that means I need to come back and repent. See, y'all people ain't ready for that type of teaching. But what I'm saying is, y'all, listen, it should be different. All right, let's pray, and then we're going to go into some other things. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt your name. Thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for allowing us, oh God, to walk amongst the land of the living. Again, another opportunity to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, which is our most reasonable service, that we will not be conformed to this world, but we'll be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of yours. Thank you. You are the God of our salvation. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you for covering us with your blood. Wherever life had us on this day, this fall, Thank you for allowing us to get to this second, this minute, this hour. Thank you for protecting us from seen and unseen dangers. Thank you, Lord, for, for providing all our provisions. We consecrate our minds. We consecrate our hearts. God, we ask that you forgive us for all our many sins, even sins unconsciously. Forgive us for besetting sins, iniquities, trespasses, God, we ask that the blood of your son, Christ Jesus, which washed away all sin, will wash us again, Lord. God, we reverence this house of worship. We reverence the vessels in this house. We reverence your name in this house. We reverence your presence in this house. God, we reverence your word in this house. We sanctify this time of Bible study. God, you declare to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, a workman that needed not to be ashamed to write and divide your word. God, we come in covenant agreement with that scripture, that as we open up your scriptures, your divine inspiration, your divine revelation will come forth, and your word will be rightly divided. God, that we may be approved unto you, Lord, that we may leave this place changed. Don't let us leave as we have come. God, we want to be transformed by worship. We want to be transformed in prayer. We want to be transformed by your word. God, that when we leave this place, individuals will know we have been with you. Our light will shine before men. Oh, God, our light will shine in darkness, oh, God. God, we will be the salt of this earth. We will be the savior of the earth, oh, God. Oh, God, our good works will be seen, Lord, that you might get the glory. Get the glory, Lord, during this time, in this place. Get the glory online, Lord. You're not confined by space or time. Oh, God, get the glory, Lord. Those that are watching, Lord, I pray between my lips and their ears, Holy Spirit, you give in, get into it. Give us what we need. God, we stand before you as empty cups before flowing fountains. Fill our cups, oh, God. God, we ask that you save Save some man, save some girl, save some woman, save some boy on tonight. God, let a word be spoken out of your scriptures that will send forth deliverance, that will send forth healing on tonight, that will send forth salvation. God, we pray for this area, Lord. God, we pray that you will manifest your power in this place. Manifest your power in this area. Oh, God, reveal your will unto men, women, boys, and girls, oh, God. Hallelujah. Let incense go up from this house that when people pass, they will feel your presence, oh, God. Bring down strongholds, oh, God. Send your arrow of deliverance, oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Send your deliverance power, Lord. 
God, let your blood prevail. Send your warring angel against every principality, every power, every ruler of the darkness of this world, every spiritual wickedness in high places, Lord. Send deliverance, oh God, to you. people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we bless your name, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I bless your name, Lord. Override my natural abilities. Override my natural abilities. Stir up the gifts that is within me, Lord. Let not my teaching and preaching be weak, enticing words as man's wisdom. But let it come forth in demonstration and in power. Manifest your word as it is declared, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. God, we bless your name. Wherever you are in this sanctuary, wherever you are at home, just, just lift your hands for a moment. I, I know you're just coming from work. I know some of us just been busy. We haven't lifted our hands all day long. The lifting up of holy hands is a sign that, God, we surrender unto you. God, we surrender unto you. We surrender unto you. We surrender, we surrender unto you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I surrender my life unto you, Lord. God, you're awesome, you're glorious, you're magnificent. There is none like you, there is none beside you, Lord. And we worship you on tonight. Amen and amen, amen, amen. I don't know about you, but Whenever, see, whenever I, uh, whenever I do something that I say is spiritual, uh, as either in prayer, worship, studying God's word, witnessing, talking to someone about Christ, uh, I expect, we ought to expect God to do something different. Uh, I expect the Holy Spirit to show up. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is for. He says, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, shall come in my name and it shall what? Teach you all truth. It shall lead and guide you into all truth. So whenever we come together, whenever we engage in something that invokes, number one, we need to invoke the Holy Spirit. We, we don't even do that anymore. We, we invoke everything else except for the Holy Spirit. See, as I was talking before the prayer, I want, I'm totally different. You know, I, I've got a new perspective, and we ought to have a new perspective on life. We have, we should have a more appreciation on life. Uh, not that those that went home and, and, and are asleep in the Lord and passed, uh, not that they didn't have an appreciation, but those of us that are here, you know, especially those of us that contracted COVID-19, it could have been another way. Can I tell you something, y'all? It Oh, my goodness. It, it ought to show us that we shouldn't take life for granted. You know, that second, that, that moment, that minute that just passed, we shouldn't take it for granted. And, uh, and, and I can tell you that, you know, death takes people by surprise. You know, it's not too many people that get in a position where the Lord, as in Scripture, you know, Lord, the Lord told some individuals that he was finna what? Their time was up. But just think about the individual that death took them by surprise. They expected to be what? There. We shouldn't take this time for granted. Oh, my goodness. Every opportunity, golly, y'all. I'm going somewhere. Golly, I'm just, is he just flipping the script? Every opportunity that God gives you to be on this earth, we shouldn't take it for granted. It ought to draw us closer to him. We ought to reconcile with what others. You know, Jesus, the Bible said, he came to wit God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 9. That's one of our scriptures what I'm talking about. You know, Christ coming. That's why in all things, Jesus is our example 
of what we should be doing, how we should behave, how we should be acting, what of our attitudes. He says this in 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, Christ, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Christ, Christ came to reconcile our lives back to the Father. He came to help us reconcile back to each other. Why? Because our vertical relationship, this is good right here, our vertical relationship with God affects our what? Horizontal relationships with what? With others. Y'all, I'm finna start tripping. Did y'all get that? Somebody ought to write that down. My vertical relationship with God in the form of a cross, my vertical up and down relationship affects my what? Horizontal relationships with people. He came, Christ came to show us how to be reconciled, what we need to do to be reconciled. What does reconcile? To be brought back to what? To what? To what? Right position what? With God. He came and he gave us those instructions. He gave us, he gave, he taught those disciples. Through his word we now see. His disciples went out and what taught the same thing. How to what? Get back one with God. We don't good God. We don't hear messages like that. We hear everything else except how to return back to what? God. What we need to turn to? Our relationships. Y'all, let me show y'all something. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. Y'all don't. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. Let's, let's go there. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 says this. Let's start at verse number. Oh, God. Let's start at 5 and 9. I'm here now. I, I just might as well talk about reconciling ministry. I, I thought I would get with into outreach and evangelism, and I am. I'm doing something. Because when you go and you present Christ to somebody else, you need to know what? You need to know what Christ has done. So we're talking about outreach and evangelism. The first principle, golly, here it is. The first principle of outreach and evangelism is that we got to understand who Christ is and why he came. We need a fresh vision of what? Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need a new vision. What's vision? It is what? It is the unseen made real. Y'all, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. It's so much coming. It is, what is vision? The first principle of outreach and evangelism is that we have to have a vision of our Lord. And what's a vision? It is the unseen made real. We need a real manifestation of what? Who God is and who Christ is all over again. If we're going to what? Reach the world. If we're going to what? Bring others. If we're going to what? Bring ourselves. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 9. It says, it says, wherefore we labor that we, that whether present or absent, we may be acceptable unto who? Unto him. What he's saying is, whatever we do, labor, whatever we talk, how we work, what we do, how we work it, we want to be found what? Present unto him. And Paul was talking to the church at Corinth. What he was saying was whether or not we are present with you or we're absent. What he was clarifying with them that, listen, I am not, he's not doing this. He's not working the ministry out of their presence. He ain't doing one thing in their presence and doing one thing out of their presence. What he said was, whether for we labor, we labor, we work, we toil. What's laboring? Toiling. We working. We in acting, we're transacting that whether present or absent, we may be acceptable unto him. Acceptable of him. Who is that him? Christ. So what we do, what how I respond, what I do for him is all about what being acceptable unto him, not your pastor, not the deacon, not my apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist. 
not the praise and worship team. Everything I do for him is to be acceptable unto him. Watch this. Watch this. He said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So he talks about what? He talks about the judgment seat. There's a Greek word, the bema seat. The bema seat. The bema seat was the place where people were judged. All right? I don't want to even get on the five judgments. But he says this. He said, all of us are going to be judged whatever we did in and in this body, whether it was good or bad. Watch this. Knowing therefore the terror of our Lord, we persuade men. Knowing that there's a there's a terror of the Lord, a judgment, that there, there is a there is a mean uh, 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 hostility side of God. I know we present Christ as love and he is love, but there is a place where God gets what? He gets what? He he moves his hand. And he declared what? Judgment. Watch this. He said, therefore, he said, knowing this terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. He said, everything we do, we doing it what? To manifest something towards him. So if you see what we are doing, then something ought to impact your country. Can I tell you something? True ministry. True ministry ought to impact others. True, I'm going to say it again. True ministry ought to impact your conscience to what? To do something. Watch this. For we command not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer, dealing with glory and appearance and not in art. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is of God. Or whether we be sober, it is up for your cause. For the love of Christ constrained us. The love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we're all dead. And that he die for all, that they which live should know henceforth live unto themselves. Watch this. So he is pointing towards Christ's work on the cross. He is pointing towards the fact that he died for all. He's pointing, he's pointing towards the fact that the, the love of Christ constrains. What does it constrain? It constricts. It keeps us. Can I tell you something? You and I, it wasn't nothing that we did. It wasn't about our intellect, our good looks. It wasn't about who we were. It was all about what the love of Christ. So when it comes down to the outreach and evangelism, we first need to have a vision of what? Christ's ministry, a vision of our Lord. We need to understand why he came, what he did, and why he did it. And the first thing he offered us, what? God's constraining love. All right, watch this. We can get, we get there. Wherefore, verse number 16, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth no, we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Watch this. So when we come to Christ, if we be in Christ, when we're born again, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, when we're baptized, when we what? When we are saved, we are no longer. We are no longer those old creatures. We have become what? New. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Look at the work of God. Look at the work of Christ in God. God in Christ. That once we receive him, we become what? New creatures. We who were dead in past trespasses and in sins has he what? Quickened. We're going to go there. Watch this. And all things of God who have reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. He says that you're a new creature. Recognize you are now brought back into what? Right standing with, with, with God. Christ came to bring us into right standing with God. Therefore, we ought to present Christ as the one who what? Brings us back to God. Because sin in our lives 
prior to giving our lives to God, separated us from him. In order to what? Bring us back. He had to send what? His son. He came in sinful flesh what? To die for us. So we need to understand when it comes down to outreach and evangelism, in order to reign the world, in order to do outreach, in order to what? Evangelize. Tell the good news. Change. Evangelisto. Evangelizo. Change individuals. We need to have a fresh vision, a renewed vision of who Christ is and why he came. And notice nowhere in these scriptures do we say, see, Christ came to give us houses, cars, and land. Nowhere in these scriptures does he guarantee you what? A wife, a husband, a house on the hill with a picket fence with a lake down at the bottom. No, he first what? Reconciles us back to God. Oh, Jesus. That's what we need to be telling the people. First, get yourself back right unto God. Not the preacher, not the pastor, not the evangelist, not the deacon, not the praise and worship team, not all of that. First, get your get right and be reconciled back to God. Be back, be brought back into what? One place, one location. Be made right with him, right standing. He says this, watch this, watch this right. He says this, and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. It brings us into the ministry of fellowship. Y'all see that? The ministry of reconciliation. You know what you and I do, what we ought to be doing we ought to be ministering reconciliation, bringing us back into fellowship with God. Because what sin uh, in the human race had alienated us from God. Can I tell you something? You know the problem with individuals outside the things of God right now is that they're out of fellowship. Who brings that? Us, the believers, Christians. We present that to individuals. So when I introduce somebody to Christ, I'm not introducing houses, cars, and land, and all that's good, and all that does come in some aspects. But what I'm really introducing is you're now back in fellowship with God. You are now walking in your legal position with God. Oh, my goodness. To fellowship. It's an action word. Golly, man. So in verse number 18, he says, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Can I tell you something? Once you accept Christ, and once you accept what? His, his, his blood on your life and his Holy Spirit, you now have a ministry, can I tell y'all something, of reconciliation. There's no such thing, see, see, because most of us thought, y'all, I feel like preaching. Most of us thought the ministry is all about preaching this. What I'm doing now or teaching. No, if you are born again, you are saved, you give your life to Christ, you are a new creature. You now have authority. There it is. You now have authority. You now have the right to minister reconciliation. Y'all, can I tell you something? Because now you are brought back unto him. You are now in fellowship. You now have what? The authority. You now have the power to what? Minister reconciliation. There's no such thing as a born-again believer who does not have in their lives the ministry of reconciliation. I'm there now, y'all. We there now. We are there. There's no such thing as I cannot bring individuals to Christ. Uh-uh. Because he's given us. Golly, I feel that, y'all. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. So every Christian, every believer, every born-again saint, regardless of how old you are, you have a ministry. It ain't necessarily what teaching or preaching and what we call ministry now. Nah, you have an obligation now because you have been reconciled back to God. You now have an obligation to what? Bring others into fellowship with him. And also what? Vertically and also horizontal. Man, that's some, that's some good teaching right there. Good God, man, that's good. Oh, God, speak to us. He said, and have given to us 
the ministry of reconciliation. He said, you're no longer a rebellious against God. Can I tell you what we ought to minister to people? Re reconciliation, being brought back into fellowship with God. I ain't talking about being brought into fellowship with the church. I'm talking about being brought back into fellowship with God. Before I give the, oh, before I say anything, you first need to be back into fellowship with him. Giving food boxes is good. Cooking hamburgers and hot dogs is good. Doing all that is good, but what is that if we don't bring people back into fellowship with God? Those are avenues that we make contact with individuals. Good God, in mind. we first make contact with their needs. Y'all, we finna get in this. God, we make contact with their needs. And then when you make contact with their needs, you have to understand that we're only doing this. We're only giving these hamburgers and hot dogs, these food boxes, whatever you're doing, in order to what? Show you how we are bringing you in reconciliation. We are obtaining, we are working the ministry of reconciliation, trying to bring you back into fellowship with God. God, he is a, we act as a, and even Christ, the Bible says, he was a mediator between God and man. Can I tell you something? Sometimes, Lord, Hammers, sometimes we are the mediators between God and man. Because people, oh my goodness, people on the outside of God don't know him like we do. So we have to be the mediator, the go-between. Can I tell you something? When you and I came into this thing, when you and I was introduced to Christ, somebody had to be that mediator. We may not have saw it. Tell you plenty of times, man, when I got it from, when I got it my pastor's office after receiving the Holy Spirit, the saints were saying, God, yes, we were praying for you. It was on a Tuesday night. In my pastor's office where I received the Holy Spirit, came out of there, and the saints were just rejoicing because they had been praying for me. What mediated? Oh, my goodness. A mediator. The Bible says that Christ was a mediator between God and man. Oh, now we become, we have that ministry, just like he do, to reconcile, to bring us back into fellowship with God. How is that done? Be in our attitudes, our beliefs, in our values, what we do, what, how we operate, how we act, operate around individuals. How else do we what? Present Christ and God to them. Verse number 19. Mm, 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 mm. We got to have a vision of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says, to wit, here it is. That God was in Christ. Talk about a hypostatic union. God was in Christ. When you saw Christ, you saw God manifested in the flesh. When they was looking upon him. Y'all remember in John, they said, he told them, Jesus said, Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He said, I am who Abraham saw. So Christ was God manifested in the flesh. Second Timothy, to wit, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Y'all, y'all need me to show you that one, cause y'all don't believe me that one. Y'all, y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me on that one. Turn to, turn to, uh, Lord. Great is the mystery of godliness. Turn to, uh, let me find it. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Somebody put that there. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Because we see God in, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, it'll say God was in Christ, right? And 2, 1 Timothy 3 and 16 and without controversy. It ain't nothing to argue over. What's the controversy? Without controversy, there's no what? There's no debating. There's no if, ands, and buts. It's clear. There's no confusion. There's no, there's no, it's not fuzzy. 
There's no misunderstanding without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was what? Manifested in the flesh. How was God manifested in the flesh? Through who? Jesus Christ. Justified in the spirit. How was what? God justified in the spirit. The Holy Spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto what? The Gentiles. Believed on in the world and received up in glory. Godliness. God was in Christ. Good night, y'all. We got to understand who he is. When we talk about Christ, we are talking about God. When we're talking about God, we're talking about what? He was God. He was God in his creative ability. He was the father in his creative ability. He was what? The son, Jesus Christ, in what? His redemptive work. And he was the Holy Spirit come in inside of what? Believers. Here you go. So y'all, all right, go to Matthew 1 and 21. Oh, let's have a vision of who Christ is. Matthew 1 and 21. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Matthew 1 and 21. We're talking about the mystery of godliness. We're breaking down through the scriptures how God was in Christ. It's not two individuals. It's one. Watch this. Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name who? Jesus. Watch this. Watch this now because I'm going to give you another principle. I'm going to give you a principle of vision of our Lord and his purpose is coming. She shall bring forth a son and that shall call his name Jesus for he shall what? Save his people from what? Their sins. So the son is Jesus. And the son came to what? Save. That's why I tripped during Easter and Christmas. So I said Merry Christmas all the time. How, yeah, Merry Christmas. How was Christ revealed in your life? How was he birthed in your life today? So we see the Son is what Jesus, for he shall what? Save his people from what? Their sins. All right. Let's go to John. Jesus. Oh God, let's see here. Go to John 5 and 43. John 5 and 43. The Gospel of John 5 and 43. Well, we can we can do we can do all that right there. John 5 and 43. So Matthew 1 and 21, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his what name? Jesus. The son name is Jesus. He came as a son in his redemption to die for what sins. Watch this. John 5 and 43. I am come, Jesus talking, it's in red, right? I am come in my Father's name. Y'all see that? And you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you receive. So he said, I'm coming in my Father's name. This Jesus talking. Well, what was his name? Jesus. So the Father's name is Jesus. Jesus and the Father one. He is the Father in his what? Creative ability. Jesus told them, he beheld Satan fall from heaven as lightning in the beginning. Jesus said, I was there at the beginning of creation. How was he there at the beginning of creation? Because he was God. All right. Y'all got that. Turn to... John chapter number John chapter number 14 and verse number 26. I want to help you because we need we need to understand the ministry of reconciliation. 
And what am I showing you? I'm showing you different aspects of Jesus' ministry by his titles. He was the son what in what? Redemption, reconciling, dying, that he shall what save his people. How does that say? The remission of sins. What? He being the ultimate sacrifice for sin to bring people back. Because the Bible says this, without, the Bible says this, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Blood had to be shed. Watch this. And then we saw in John 5 and what, 43, that he came in his father's name, Jesus. And that father's name, he came as a father in his what? Creative ability. Now, let me show you how he is the Holy Spirit in his what? Infusing power in the believer. John chapter number 14, verse number 26. Boy, I wish I had uh, some way to answer questions on tonight. This, this would have been a good Q&A. John 14 and 26, watch this. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father was seen in my name, he shall teach you all things and shall bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he said, the Holy Ghost will come in his name. What's his name? Jesus. And he came to what? Teach us all things and to bring all things back to remembrance whatever he told them. In the same infusing power of the Holy Spirit comes inside of what? Each believer. So watch this, y'all. Why did I say that? Go to Matthew 28 and 19. Because we need to bring individuals the ministry of reconciliation through Jesus Christ. First principle about outreach and evangelism is have a good vision of who God is, who Christ is, why he came. The reason why we have problems being reconciled to God because we have the wrong perspective of Jesus. The reason why we can't reconcile others to him because we have the wrong, uh, uh, wrong what, perception of who Christ is. The reason why we can't be reconciled in our relationship with other believers is because we have the wrong what, aspect and perspective of who Jesus is. Turn to Matthew 28 and 19. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Now, this is going to get you. This is, I said all that to say this. In Matthew 28 and 19, before Jesus' uh, a second ascension, he now speaks and he gives a charge. And we call this the Great Commission. What is commission? Oh, goodness. See, we get into outreach and evangelism. It's understanding calm means around. Mission means task. Understanding the whole task. Go ye therefore. Go. Lord Jesus. I'm getting into it y'all. Therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach. Y'all see why teaching is powerful. Teaching what is information. Important knowledge. Being formed from what? Within. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now he brings it to baptism. What does baptism do? Romans 6. It what? It identifies what? With Christ what? Burial. Lord, I, I'm out there now. It identifies with Christ's burial. That as he what? Died. He physically died that we may what? Spiritually die. So it, what, it identifies what his burial, in the likeness of his burial, that we may rise in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. Romans chapter 6. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, Father is not a name. Son is not a name. And the Holy Ghost is not named. They are titles. He was the father in creation. He was the son in redemption. He is the Holy Ghost in his what? Infusing power. But what is his name? 
And notice that word name is not what? Plural is singular. That means, number one, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost had a name. So who, what was the name? The name was Jesus. Baptized them in the name of Jesus. Nowhere you see in, the, in Acts where the apostles baptized anybody in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. See, now we're getting on baptism, and I know folk get uncomfortable. But this is the problem we have. It's in order to, in order to exercise the ministry of reconciliation to wit God was in Christ. Reconciled. Now he have given us what? The ministry we have to have. Why am I teaching this? I'm not teaching, I'm not teaching something that's crazy. I'm teaching us this, and the Holy Spirit is teaching us this because we have to have the right ask, we have to right, have the, the right perspective of who Christ is. Verse number 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Lord, look at the ministry of Christ. Look what all comes in who Christ is. Y'all go to Luke. I'm there now. I might as well close it out. I might as well, I might as well jump on it now. I'm, I'm, I'm out there now. Luke, let's look at Luke's perspective. Matthew, we just saw Matthew's perspective. Now let's look at Luke. Uh, Luke 24. And verse number 46. And he said unto them, Now this is Luke talking. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day. Watch this. He said, It is written, it was necessary, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. This corresponds with Matthew 28 and 19. But this is Luke's, how the Holy Spirit is moving through Luke to write it. This corresponds with what? Matthew 28 and 19. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. Go tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians. So, when we talk about outreach and evangelism, we got to have the right perspective of who, who Jesus is. We got to have the right vision. Oh man, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself, y'all. I, I promise you. Because the next thing is we must have the right vision. And vision precedes commission. Once you commission, you know, as, as if, if you're in the army, uh the, the armed forces, they are commissioned. If you're a law enforcement officer, you raise your hand right hand, you're commissioned, you're given authority. But before you get that authority, you are trained, you have to have the right vision. The right vision. Y'all, I'm going to stop there. Golly, man. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse number 19. To weep that God was in Christ reconciling, bringing us back into fellowship unto himself. Not charging them or imputing their trespasses unto them. Not charging you that. Not, not saying you're wrong. And had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. You know what? We wouldn't even have the word reconciliation or coming back into fellowship if it wasn't for the fact that God was in Christ doing this reconciling through his work on Calvary. Through his suffering, through his what? Passion. That's another thing. We're going we to get to it, y'all. It's, it's just so much coming up. Then he said, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. What does an ambassador do? 
It represents, an ambassador represent has full authority, have all rights to transact business for one nation to another. He says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. I got to stop there, y'all. Let me stop. Let me stop because if I don't stop, then we're going to go on. Listen, I promise you for the next couple of weeks, if you have a passion, if you have a yearning to see others come into this, and I know we don't even use that. No, we don't even have people that have burdens for souls. Can I tell you something? That's our first responsibility. After we come in and make new creatures is to minister reconciliation, to have a burden for souls, to do what? Outreach and evangelism. God, we thank you. If y'all have questions, write those questions down in the coming area. And I promise you, when I go back to review this, I'm going to look for what? Prayer requests, and I'm going to look for questions. And perhaps we may answer them immediately, or we may answer them when I come back, all right? God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you that the entrance of your word give it light and give it understanding to the simple. God, we thank you for the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you that you have given us the word of reconciliation through you coming in Christ and reconciling, bringing us back into fellowship with you. God, we pray that we will have a right perspective of who you are in Christ. God, that you was the father in creation. You was what? The son in redemption. And you was the Holy Spirit infusing inside of believers. God, give us and return us back to the right perspective of who Christ is. That we may now as believers, God, have the ministry of reconciliation. God, I pray for unbelievers who shall watch this. I pray that you somehow through your divine Holy Spirit speak to them. And let them know that it is through Christ. He is the door that brings us back into fellowship with the God. God, we pray that those that are not saved, God, we pray that they find a church. They find a man or woman of God who understands the ministry of reconciliation. God, we pray that you pour out your spirit. God, we pray that you pour out your spirit upon all flesh. We pray that men, women, boys and girls are saved. God, as this message goes forth, as we take it outside these doors, God, I pray that lives are changed. We now understand who we are, that we are ministers of reconciliation. We are ministers. We, are, we have the ministry. We have the capacity. We have the wherewithal. We have the authority to bring men, women, boys, and girls back unto you. Give us, you say, he that winneth souls is wise. Give us that wisdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Listen, I love you. God bless you. I pray that in this, doing this just first lesson, y'all, we got, we got some, we going to die deep, y'all know? Y'all know how I do. Listen, if you have any questions, put them in the comments area. Or if you're afraid and timid to put it in the comments area, send me a message through Messenger. Uh... <clears throat> or if you know how to contact me, if you have my personal phone number, you may you just send it. Listen, y'all, it is time to bring people back into fellowship with God. Unfortunately, we brought people into fellowship with all other stuff, but it's now to return back to Christ, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. And guess what? It is for us to understand that those outside of us, it's time to get back to evangelism. All right, can I tell you something? We have all, we don't restore all the gifts. We don't, all the gifts have been restored. Can I give you a word? Y'all want a word? All the gifts of the spirit are now active in the church. All right? All of the fivefold ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors have been restored. Now it's time to get back to what? Winning the loss. God bless you. I love you. I love you. Peace out. I got to go. Got to go. Listen, I got to go. I cannot, I cannot continue to be up here. I got to go. God bless you.